Hey everyone, Trevor Daly here with MagMod. Hey, I am excited. We did an episode yesterday with Hannah Bell and today I get to chat with the amazing and uber talented Andre Brown. Andre, thanks so much for joining me today, man. And thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I actually, um, and it, it, again, I, I always get a sneak peek to see what kind of images we're gonna talk about and you guys are in for a real treat. I love Andre's photos are not, in, incredible not only incredible the lighting is not only incredible but i love your editing style andre i just love how it's like this mm. classic like timeless beautiful editing style so i can't wait to show that to people as well appreciate it man yeah hey andre while i um i'm gonna go back here and do um just in the magmod page i'm gonna make sure we share this over to the community in the meantime i'm gonna give cool. you the camera and can you actually introduce yourself to everyone where, where to find you where you're located all that good stuff Cool. Um, well, obviously, my name is Andre Brown. Andre Brown Photography, based here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I do wedding and weddings and portraits, and um, you know, I've been shooting for almost about six years now. So definitely follow me on Instagram. Check out my website when you have a chance. Appreciate it. Oh, sorry. I had my I had my mic muted there for a second, Andre. I was like, I was sitting there talking to myself. I, I was just telling everyone. I was saying, here's his here's his Instagram account right here. So definitely go check him out, you guys. Andre photo, Andre Brown photo. Sorry about that. Um, and mm -hmm. again, your work is outstanding, dude. I just absolutely love it. Now, are you based right in kind of the the middle of Atlanta? Like, are you? I mean, are you just right there in the city, or whereabouts are you at? I'm not far from the city. Like I live in, um, I live maybe about four or five exits from Midtown. My studio, which is where I am now, is in West Midtown, and gotcha. um, yeah, so I'm right here in the heart of the city. I love the city down there, man. I, I visited the uh, Georgia Aquarium and the Coke Museum and all those places. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, real quick, Andre, let's bring up your website and I'm going to actually make it full screen here so we can see the whole thing. This is just absolutely stunning as well. I love how you have all these photos popping up again. You guys just look at this. It's so classic. So timeless. I love your style, man. Um, and then Andre, I, I have got to say, I was over here clicking on this and there's a section that says for photographers embrace workshop Cancun 2021. Um, I am so jealous. I want to go to this man. <laughs> tell, tell us right. about this um yeah so i started the embrace workshop 2018 and um you know just always had photographers asking you know just about me and shooting and things like that and um you know i, I wanted to do something a little bit different most of the time you see wedding workshops and you know you're teaching wedding photography um but you know and even reception you know decor uh, photography and that sort of thing. And most of the time people are doing like a tablescape. Well, if you go back and you look at the photos from Embrace 18, um, I did a full ceremony and reception setup. So uh -huh. it was a, a, re a reception setup um, for, I think it was like 90 people. So it was like a real reception so that Jeez. people could go in and learn how to do reception lighting properly. Um, of course, I was using my Magma tools, and um, but I also showed them how to do things with um, with LED lights and things like that as well. And it just gave people the opportunity to go in and learn, but also play, so they can figure out what it is that they they like. You know, whether they wanted to do LED for this or uh -huh. whether they wanted to do um, you know uh, strobes for this. And uh, that's something that you just don't have the flexibility to do on wedding day. You're in a time crunch. You have to be able to make things happen. Um, we skipped 2019 because I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to be able to add value. So for 2020, um, I decided to take the workshop to Cancun and we got uh, canceled out because of COVID. So yeah. we're actually um, going to Cancun this June and uh, you know, so we, we rebooted Cancun, but the idea is again, to add value. Um, we have full ceremony and reception set up for our wedding day, but we're also doing on location shoots so that the attendees can add destinations to their portfolios, um, be able to come out and try the different Magma products. Cause I'm bringing everything that I have from Magma. So That's they'll awesome. be able to go out, try the products. And, um, and again, just, 
add value to them by adding value to their portfolio. So um, there's still two spots left for this year, even though we've kind of passed the late registration space. Um, I do I do have space for it says two, but I actually do. It's on. It's only one space left. I haven't updated it, but um, if anybody's interested, you know, just go ahead and uh, register. We can get you locked and loaded. And um, Embrace Twenty Twenty Two is actually going to be in Dubai, so I'm in the process of um, wow. getting everything all planned out for Dubai. The shoots that we have planned are going to be incredible. So, looking forward to that. That's really cool, man. So June twenty seventh through July first, Embrace Workshop Cancun. I've I've been to Cancun. I absolutely love um, the the whole area down there. Cancun, Playa del Carmen. I mean, the water is like absolutely outstanding. It looks so pretty. Right. Um, and you're gonna be there in a great time. So that's cool, man. I June twenty seventh. I'll have to see if I can swing that. <laughs> I love it. It would be awesome to be there. It would be awesome to be there. Um, so I guess I, if anyone is interested, I, I just happen to notice it on the four photographers page. Is that the best place to find it? Yes, that's the best place. Um, okay. Or you can just go direct um, embraceworkshop.com, but it forwards you directly to this page. Um, gotcha. Go in, go check it out. If you're interested, register, and uh, we'll get cool. you locked and loaded and come and join us in Cancun. That's awesome, man. Well, good deal. I and you know what I love is is you mentioned the portfolio idea, building the portfolio. Because honestly, once you get those images where you're showing that you're shooting in other places, immediately right. people in your city start saying, "Well, well, geez, if you know if Trevor's shooting weddings over in Cancun, obviously he's good enough to be shooting weddings right here in Phoenix." You know, and and 100%. they get excited about that. It's like they're hiring a destination photographer for their local wedding. So, um, right. Definitely a cool thing. Hey, um, as always, guys, I love when uh, when people start chiming in and tell us where they're watching from. So definitely uh, let me know if you're in the Magmod community or Magmod page. Let us know where you're watching from. I We already have Alexander Alexandros. He's saying hi from Greece. That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. You'll That's have to, uh, uh, Andre, in 2023, you'll have to do a Embrace Workshop in Greece. How about that? <laughs> Actually, I want to go out to Greece, you know? I mean, you know, once I started doing more destination stuff, it afforded me the ability to be able to take um, couples. I'm doing a lot of engagement sessions and destinations and stuff. So wow. um, the ability to to go out there and produce a shoot on your own, it would cost you tens of thousands of dollars, you know, but yeah, putting the, the workshop and giving you an opportunity to come out and add this stuff to your portfolio. Um, we keep the ratio of models to photographers low. So that way you can have images that are unique. You don't have a, a workshop or a conference with 50 people and you all have the same, you know, this year yeah. you have the same images. So we try to keep that three to one ratio with photographers to models. And in that way you can have images that are fairly unique. That's cool, man. That's really cool. I like it. I like what you're doing. I, I did a workshop in uh, Cancun, gosh, probably eight years ago. And uh, wow. it's one of those experiences I still remember very fondly. So uh, whoever's down there with you, it's, it's going to be an amazing experience. I don't doubt it. Hey, we did have uh, yeah, Hugo uh, was tuning in from Phoenix. We got Tomas is tuning in from Poland. We got uh, Misha is tuning in from Switzerland. Appreciate you being here, Misha. Wow. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Mike is tuning in from Saudi Arabia. Isn't that fun? Wow. I, Andre, this is one of my favorite parts of the show is just seeing where people are tuning in from. I, some, one day somebody's just going to start like, uh, having fun with me and just like putting whatever country they want. But, uh, but I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, what kind? yeah. Uh, Mauricio, Mauricio is out of Costa Rica. Uh, we had him on how I shot it not too long ago. He's an amazing photographer as well. So, um, it, it, thanks for tuning in, Mauricio. So, Andre, with that, what do you say we get into some of these incredible images of yours? Can we talk about them? Yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. Let's do this. Let me uh, go ahead and close this screen down and let me open up my keynote here. We got the first image, and I'm actually going to pull you off the screen here just for a second so we can take in the whole shot because it's absolutely incredible. Um, so, tell us how you shot this image, Andre. Um, pretty simple. Like I pretty much use almost the same kind of technique for most of the images. Um, you know, I like that contrasty look and, um, I love the soft light from 
you know, soft boxes. So this is yeah. mag box all the way. Um, I have 180, 200 inside, and obviously it's camera right. And uh, we got them up on the side of this uh, this little cliff here. Yeah. Um, shot the shot. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much pretty basic in terms of, you know, the lighting. I love directional lighting. Yeah. And um, the, pretty much every image you'll see is that's always going to be my go-to in order to uh, to be able to capture the look and feel that I want. So, so Andre, what what is the go-to then? The go-to is just the kind of a one light in a mag box. Is that right? No, not always, not always one light, um, but definitely it's always going to be directional light. Um, okay. And mag, mag box is going to be my go-to, um, especially if it's a situation where I have someone that can hold the light because if the wind had blown and this thing was by itself, it would have been down there in that valley somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, this doesn't look like Georgia. Where was this shot at? No, no this was Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I love Las it. Las Vegas. So yeah, we uh we actually there's another image that you'll see later on. It's the same couple, but um we went to Puerto Rico and we did their initial engagement session, and their wedding got pushed because of COVID. And um December she gave me a shout. She said, "Hey, I want to do another engagement session since we got pushed, but I want to outdo what we did last time." So we talked about some locations, found this one out in Las Vegas, and just went out, spent a few days. And uh, we shot some great images over the course of two days. That's cool. It is. It is a beautiful shot. And Las Vegas has some really incredible landscapes just outside the city there. So right. um, good stuff, man. Hey, uh, before we jump into the next image real quick, Mark uh, is watching from UK. Uh, Mark actually did a really nice post in the Magmog community. I think it was just yesterday. Uh, so we appreciate you being here, Mark. And then also we got uh, Glad Kalunga is watching from Zambia. So Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? I again, I always just I'm tickled pink every time I get people watching from all over the world. It makes it's so much fun. So, again, appreciate you guys all being here. Um, good stuff, man, Andre. I love that shot. So let's. So with that in mind, kind of that uh, you know the one shot I are the 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 mag box and stuff. I know you said we're going to see a lot of that kind of that directional light. So I look forward to kind of showing people um, some more of these images. This one, however, before we get into more of the couples, this next one is actually very unique and different. Um, than, than many of the other photos that we're going to see. So I'm really interested in knowing how you did this one as well. Tell us about it. Um, this one was fun. Um, this was for the uh, cover. I, I shot it with the intent to submit it for the cover of a Shutter magazine. And you may have seen it. It did make the cover. But this was six lights, man. Uh -huh. This was this six was lights. Six wow. lights. Yeah. So, you know, obviously the the red and the green gels and, uh, you know, yeah. I basically just need to stack as many gels as I could in order to get the colors to come out as punchy as I wanted to. So uh -huh. you have the two lights on either side of the hair. There's a light at the top, hitting the top of her, her hair, as you can see. Um, uh -huh. Although it has like a kind of yellow cast, you know, that's just, um, you know, um, just that one light with yeah. the grid. So the two, the light at the top has a grid on it. The two lights on the side have uh, a little custom piece that I made. Uh, I call it my mag flag. And uh, <laughs> I, love it. I wanted to be able to control the spill of the light a little bit more because it was coming down like on her shoulders and everything. Uh -huh. And I wanted to keep it concentrated just towards the hair. So I, um, I had these little metal plates fabricated. I don't have it, have it here. Um, I actually broke it, but it's a metal plate that's in the shape of the uh, the mag grip on the uh, the actual uh, eighty two hundred, uh -huh. and then I got these little holes put in it um, so that I could. I had these two little plastic pieces that were just random um, at at the house from um, from this little case that I had that I had broken, but the little pieces you were able to like push them down in the hole and it kind of kind of flaps like this or so it, it collapses okay. down it fits in my bag like that but whenever I need it I can fold it out so then when the light is coming out it doesn't you know it doesn't spill so my so main basically flag. so you're creating like a flag in other words keeping that light from going spilling elsewhere 
only focusing on one area, but not so focused like a grid. Basically, it's kind of like don't go this way, but you can go this way. Is that right? Right, because the grid the grid wasn't giving as much color as I yeah. wanted it to. So I wanted the full light and not have the focus, but I didn't want it to spill. So my my mag flag. <laughs> I like that, man. That's awesome. That's super cool. And so, and then what did you use as a main light? Is this a large softbox of some kind? No, it's actually a uh, pro photo beauty dish with the grid on it, 30, uh, um, 30 grid on it. So that's what I use for her face. And yeah. then um, I use the, um, I use a, a soft box to be able to get that light on her legs. And then the one that's behind her um, on the backdrop. So there you go, it's my six. That's awesome, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. In fact, Mauricio said the exact same thing. Awesome. <laughs> um, and, and Paula, she says hi from the Netherlands and wow, what a beautiful shot. Um, in fact, you're getting a lot of that. You, you got, uh, uh, Ruben is tuning in from, uh, Vail, Colorado. Um, I'll be in Vail soon. Yeah. When are you going to be in Vail? Um, in July actually for an engagement session, as a matter of fact. Nice. Very cool. That would be awesome. Uh, you got Sweden tuning in. Love it. Gabriel, which is uh, Gabriel and Nancy. They're always on here learning. Um, so, hey, b before we go to the next image, Andre, and I love when the community is able to ask questions. And, and I think this is a, a, a good question. And maybe there's some input that you have for Mauricio here. But Mauricio, he's asking, he says, Andre, I don't often shoot, uh, let's say, I don't often shoot people with darker skin tones. Any tip on getting correct exposures on skin? In a couple of weeks, I'm going to shoot a wedding with a bride and groom with darker skin tones. Any tips on that? Um, I mean, for me, it just proper exposure. I don't really think that there's there's any difference in exposing for different skin tones. Now, when it comes to white balance, you definitely want to be sure that, uh, you know, people of color don't have orange, more orange skin tones, right? You want it to be as true as possible. So, you know, take care of that with your, you know, luminance and saturation. Don't oversaturate it, you know. Um, but you know, just proper exposure all the way around and you'll be good to go. That's all I yeah. do. You know, I found the same thing. I actually, I had that same question come to me one time in a class and I, I thought about it for a second and I, I was thinking there is no difference from, from me, from basically right. photographing somebody with lighter skin tones or darker skin tones. Honestly, like you said, it's, if you have a proper exposure and you're not underexposed or overexposed either side, you're going to be fine. Um, and so, yeah. I think I going think into just, it, go ahead. Yeah, I think people just overthink it, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and when you, when you overthink it, you're bound to make some, you know, mistakes or whatever. But at the end of the day, in your editing process, just be sure you're not pumping the oranges or the reds, um, yeah. just proper, proper skin tones. I love it. And Mauricio, when you're watching today, you, you're probably going to see some incredible photos with where you'll be able to kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, kind of get that confirmation that, Hey, look it, everything just, as long as I'm getting proper exposures, like Andre is here, you're going to nail it every single time. Um, good to go. so Mark's tuning in from North Carolina. And then we got Daryl, my good buddy, Daryl. Uh, he's Darryl, also what's up, bro? Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, right on. So let's jump into this next image. And this is actually Andre. I'm going to, I'm going to pull your face away here for just a second so we can see this whole image. Cause this one is one of my favorite group shots uh, ever. I'm, I'm, I'm building it up here cause it be before I even show it, but here it comes. I love <laughs> this photo, dude. Uh, this group shot is just so like, <laughs> I wish that was part of this group. They look so, so amazing. So tell us about this one. How'd you do this? Uh, trusty mag box set up. Um, yeah? nice. Had the, the mag box on with the, uh, just with the regular, diffuser on it on one side that's actually on uh camera left so you'll see the guys on that side they have a little bit more highlights but on the right side i just wanted to be able to fill in so that's actually just an ad 200 with um with the uh, mag sphere on it just to add a little pop of light in there so that they wouldn't be completely dark and um you know i, I always feather my light so um the light is actually feathered across the guys, mainly towards the guy on the right hand side sitting in the chair. Uh -huh. Okay. So the one on the 
the one on the left, I feathered it across there because although I want the groom to pop, um, he's my my main subject. I don't like the light to be super direct. I feather yeah. it across so that it kind of skims across and uh, kind of touches everybody along the way. And then the guys on the right hand side, they're primarily lit um, just so they're not super dark. The, but they're primarily lit with the AD two hundred and a, uh, a Max V. Wait, so so Andre, are you telling me um, that this was not a composite? This was just one shot lit with a Mag box and Max V. Yep, one shot, dude. And uh, if any, like you know, this is a this is at the Rich Carlton here in Atlanta. Most people in Atlanta are probably shot there. They, you know the space is super small. Like there's not a lot of room. I'm actually standing two stairs down and I'm holding the camera up overhead like this. And like, I'm, I'm uh -huh. shooting, you know, to be able to get the shot. Cause there's not a, there's not a lot of room. So I got 16 to 35 on there, but yeah, it's just, it's just two lights. And That's this crazy. is on a, this is a wedding day and I'm, if I don't have an assistant, I'm I'm pretty lazy with wanting to carry stuff around. So, <laughs> so I'm, I try to move as light as possible because I don't like to have a, a lot of stuff to, to fiddle with. But yeah, just those two lights, man. That's it. I love that. Hey, Hugo's asking there, what's your point of focus when you're shooting a group like this? Is I, I imagine this one, they're pretty lined up, you know, straight. But is there, is there, I mean, are you, I, I, I don't know. For me, I, I tend to just focus right on the on the groom. Is there? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm focused on the groom, and like yeah. you know, the the guy on the far right hand side, you know, I don't know what his deal was. He just kept wanting to come forward. So you'll see he's a little bit more forward than everybody else when you're looking at the feet. But everybody else, with it, with the exception of the guys in the chairs, obviously, but everybody else's feet on a straight line i keep them all yeah. on a straight line um and if i'm not mistaken i might have shot this image at like f4 you, you know andre it's funny you brought that up with the guy in his feet um i see that so often when you line up bridal parties they tend to make this moon shape right and what it is is right. the people on the end they want to see what's going on in the middle and so if they they kind of curve out and you have to catch that so if you're doing a group shot um, and, and your shot, actually, I think because you shot it a little ways back, you're shooting with a wider and wider lens and you said maybe F4. So I think you actually probably had him in focus just fine because it certainly doesn't stand out as being soft unless maybe you zoom in or something. But um, right. but but I will say those group shots, if you guys are out there shooting group shots, make sure those people on the ends, you got to tell them, you got to say, hey, I realize that you want to see what's going on in the middle. But if you do that, you're not going to be in focus. So I need you to, you know, everyone toes on a line kind of thing. Um Right. And, and it, so I, I appreciate you bringing that up because I can see how this guy is a little bit further in front, the guy on the right there. But but like I said, yeah, he, he still looks in focus. So, yeah, he kept moving. And no matter how much I moved him back, he moved in, you know, he would keep moving forward. And I just got yeah. tired of asking him to move because I shot the shot initially without <laughs> the, the suns in it. And then we added the suns and he just kept moving, kept moving. I was just, it's not, it's not worth it to keep asking yeah. him to move. That's funny, dude. That's funny. Uh, Hannah Bell, she says, love it. Group shots with this many people can be difficult. Spot on. Totally agree. You know what else I love about this shot, Andre, is I don't know what you said to these guys and how you got them to pose that way. Uh, if you went through each guy and said, do this, do that. But but the way you have each one of these guys that are all kind of like, you know, have you leaning on each other or, or arm out. I mean, did you did you pose each person or did you just kind of tell them, hey, give me give me your best swag pose here? <laughs> in all of my images that you see like that, I pose every single person. That's every right, dude. Single person. Um, there was a, a accident in this shot in that um, just left of the groom, the best man and one of the groom's sons, um, the best man actually moved. So he moved and mimic what I had the son doing. Mm. And, um, you know, it's funny because I, you know, I won an award for this at WPPI. And that was the one mistake that they, you know, that they uh, commented on. But he moved from how I initially posed him. And I didn't even see it till later. But at the time, I wasn't even thinking about taking it and submitting it for an award. So as far uh -huh. as I was concerned, it wasn't that big of a deal. And um, but, yeah, I posed every single person 
in these images. That's awesome, man. Hey, I uh, I got the uh, hey, come here, Emma. come here. And my my daughter, she uh, her class got quarantined from kindergarten, so she came in and want to say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> That's yeah. Andre. He's showing his amazing photos right now. Isn't that fun? All right, why don't you go? She's she's got to go back to her online class. Can you ask your sisters to help you out? I can't find it because I okay. put uh, the papers I finished, I put it under my other papers. <laughs> okay, Princess, you, you can find it though. This is what this is what it's the fun part of working from home, man, is you get uh <laughs> especially today happens to be the day where my wife is is actually out and uh so I'm trying to run the fort and now she's home and uh good stuff, man. No. <laughs> um, Keith, um, Keith, that's the one DX Mark II and the sixteen thirty five. Love it. Appreciate you answering that there. And then Juan, he says, espectacular trabajo, Andre. Me gusta mucho. Muchísimo ese foto. Ultimo foto. So he's saying, I, Andre, you speak Spanish, right? Not at all. <laughs> he's saying, he's saying a wonderful job, Andre. He says, I love especially this last photo that you just showed. And then Mauricio throwing Thank down you. a heart. Hey, Juan, if you thought that was good, man, you got to wait, man. We got even more incredible stuff. In fact, this next photo, Andre, that I'm going to pull up is you have a uh, some BTS with this one as well. So I'll let you kind of explain it. And as you're explaining, I might switch over and show some of the BTS. Yeah, I mean, same setup as always. It's going to be directional light. So camera right, I have um, the, um, the mag box with the AD200 in it, focusing, you know, directly in towards the bride. And it gives a little skim on the side of the groom's face, but it was a little dark. So on the opposite side, I have the uh, AD200 with a um, with a mag sphere and a mag grid, just pointed at the groom's face, just so that he's not in complete darkness. And I can lift those shadows and stuff in post. And uh, you see there, I have my assistant Ty, um, who's probably watching, but I have him doing a little toss and. Uh, yeah, that's how we got the the final shot. That's cool. I so Andre, th the interesting thing when I saw this behind the scenes, I saw this car back here, and I was like, "All right, how do you get a car out of a shot?" Uh, because this is, I mean, that's major editing right there. Normally, in a situation, you would do like a like a plate shot, right? Like maybe if there's people walking by or something, do a plate shot. But when you have a car mm -hmm. like that, so how the heck did you get that car out of there? Did you pull from the other side, Getting or what did you do to edit that? Yeah pull the information from the other side. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So you took the windows from the other side. Yeah. And not even actually all of the windows because of the fact that there's a portion of it behind the veil. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, once the, the actual veil portion is, is in the shot, some of it is just natural from, you know, the shot where that I actually pulled from, but yeah. that bottom portion, like where the car is or whatever, all of that stuff came from the veil and then you kind of have to, you know, draw in the the bottom part of the veil, you know, That's a little rad. bit to be able to get it to pop through. But yeah, man. I love it. I love it. Well, here's, so here's another shot in the same exact spot. Uh, it looks like your lighting's a little bit different. It looks like you do have a left and right, but there's that, there's that car again. It looks like they just like to park it right out front. Um, but I wanted to be able to, so people can see what I was referring to with that car. But what, what, what was your lighting on this one? Do you remember? So it was uh, the, the same setup. So uh, uh -huh. Magbox um, on her to give her more light. He had light coming in from the sun, which was on that side. The sun Got was uh, quite setting, but he had some light that was hitting him. As you can see on that pillar that's yeah. behind him. But then again, I needed to fill him in more. So the AD200 with the um, mag grid and the mag sphere hitting his face so that uh, we could light him up so he wouldn't be in darkness. Nice. So I want to show this one more time so people can appreciate this. So so here's the behind the scenes and you can see that cars there, uh, the lighting, beautiful. And then here's the final shot. I'm just like, I mean, I'm stunned of how you would be able to uh, to do all that. That's amazing, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Keith, <of> <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith is saying he would have ran over, pulled the cover off, shot it, and then ran back. <laughs> I, it, it, you might not yeah, shoot yeah, there right. anymore. <laughs> right, right. It's against the rules. So, like, um, it had, it rained that day. It was uh, raining that day, so they had the car covered up. Although we was there mm. during the time that the 
face is actually open. And then on that second shot um, with the second couple, uh, when we first got there, the car was uncovered, but because they closed, they ah, put the, uh, covered the, up. the cover, yeah, they put the cover on the car and yes, your antique car, you're not even allowed to, to lean on the car. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, you're getting all kinds of good words. People, people are loving your work, man. Um, I appreciate it. yeah, let's, let's jump into this next shot here. So, uh, oh, let me get rid of some of these comments. Um, this one's another one of these beautiful shots and it's, this is one of those, uh, deceptively difficult shots to make, especially cause the sky and stuff. So tell us about this one. How'd you create this? Um, just exposing for the sky. So, you know, I, I love skies and, um, you know, this guy, is, I mean, there were a few other ones with real skies, but this is an actual real sky. We had been having rain all week in Atlanta. I actually just shot this last week. And, um, you know, the clouds were looking really nice, so I exposed for the skies. And then I hid my uh, my light stand with the mag box behind that first pillar on the left-hand side. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, so it's behind there. It actually pokes... It pokes through, so it bleeds over to the pillar behind it and onto the sky. And at that okay. point, I just had to like Photoshop that out. But the light stand itself was gone. Um, it, when I first did it, I thought it would be a lot easier to pull it out than what it was, like just a quick content aware. But content aware didn't work, and I have <laughs> I had to go in and like manually do it. But uh, you had to reconstruct the column, huh? <laughs> Yeah, like that and like the clouds behind it or whatever. But, gotcha. um, you know, it was more work than what I anticipated when I first set it up. Yeah. Um, so so when you do these shots, uh, do you do you tend to to think like, OK, on this shot, you know, I'm putting it here and I know that I'm going to have this amount of Photoshop. I mean, are you do you kind of already know, like, I, I guess maybe the, the better question I'm trying to ask is when you place your light and your mag box there, do you normally try to place it in a situation or in a place where you can think, okay, I know I can Photoshop that out quicker as opposed to putting it over here where there's a bunch of branches and stuff. I mean, is that kind of go through your mind? Yeah. In situations like this, like if I can, and I didn't have an assistant that day so that I could get a plate shot or whatever. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I just put it in a place that seemingly would be easy for me to be able to Photoshop out. So when I was standing up, it put the mag box more in the tree line. So yeah. I'm actually laying, I'm laying down on the ground, shooting up uh, gotcha. 24 to 105. And, uh, but I got down far enough so that it would only be in the sky and on part of the pillar, because I assumed that it would be really easy to content wear out, but I had to put in a little bit more work <laughs> than what I had anticipated. Realize a little litter. That's funny. Um, again, no uh, Jarrett. And Jared's saying amazing use of light. He'll actually be on a show here in May. I think the first part, part of May. What? I'm sorry. What was that, Andre? I was reading Amy's comments. He said, what filter? No filter. I just exposed for the sky. Yeah. Bring, bring my shutter speed down. And, um, you know, I did I did uh, use a higher f-stop. But I think I only went to like uh, either 5.6 or 6.3. And then used the rest with the uh, shutter to bring it down to be able to pull the sky out. That was it. Nice. Uh, Gabriel and Nancy, they're asking about uh, in the mag box, do you typically use two ADs or one? Do you have a preference? One, one for the most part. Um, uh, there is an image, a few images back. I use my 400 because I did have my 400 on hand, mm -hmm. but that's, that's really rare. But uh, yeah, it's usually just one AD, 200. Nice. Very cool. All right, Andre, how about this shot right here? Another beautiful shot. Tell us about it. Yeah, this was actually one of my, well, it's one of my favorites in that. This was, I just got in my mag box at that time. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, so this was the first shot that I had taken with the mag box. And, you know, you see that camera left and then um, camera right far against the wall is um is the uh the 8200 again with my my trusty mag flag this was actually the first shot that i used the mag flag on too 
I just I came. <laughs> you have to start selling these on Amazon, man. <laughs> man, like it, it, I got it. I, uh, the piece that I have that kind of controls the light was from like a broken, um, a broken case that I had. So it's not even something that's uh, <laughs> that I can you know duplicate. It's like this broken case, and now that I've broken it, now I need to figure out a way to uh, make another one. That's funny, man. Well, I can't wait to see what it looks like. <laughs> so, so you had two flashes. You had the mag box left. And then, you know what I love is that flash on the right hand side. This is one of those things that just makes a little bit of a difference that, you know, that uh, sometimes we don't even catch. But you can see that little bit of rim light just kind of hitting uh, his head. I, it's funny. I'm using my cursor to kind of point at it, but I know you guys can't see that on your screen. But I love that that little bit of separation there. Just that, that little bit of specularity right on the edge of his kind of forehead and kind of separates things. Um, yeah. that, that came Carves from that on the them. camera right, right? Yeah. It's far back against the wall on the right. And you can actually see it on the... Uh, the light fixture at the top on the right hand side too you see that it's lit yeah. up by that light nice nice actually it's funny because that creates that same separation which makes those lights really pop as well and right. i love the the leading lines the lines going from the lights down right right into him as well good stuff man right even sandy sandy saying fabulous work it's funny mm -hmm. depending on the photo i don't know where to put these comments so sometimes they go up top sometimes they go on the bottom so i apologize <laughs> if you guys see me moving it in live it's me just trying to control the show here um right on so andre let's jump into this shot this is one of uh i, I feel like i've seen a lot of your shots where you do this uh you know action with the dresses um you use the dresses with the veils and stuff like that so i'm curious not only how you shot this but maybe if you have any tips on on how you get those dresses and veils to kind of do what they do there, you know, fly like they do. Yes, it's always somebody tossing. So this shot was a lot more difficult to make happen than, you know, I anticipated it being. Um, this was the the couple from the first shot that we talked about. This was their oh, first yeah. engagement session. Mm -hmm. So we went down to Puerto Rico to shoot, and uh, it was them, myself, and the makeup artist. So, um, I try to move as portable as possible. I use the, uh, I brought a Manfrotto nano stand, but yeah. uh, it wasn't tall enough at all to be able to get the light on there. So the light was kind of hitting on their chests mm. and uh, the makeup artist couldn't hold it because I needed her to toss the dress. So <laughs> there was a lot of toys there. There was a guy standing by watching. I just asked him like, yo man, can you pick this light up for me? So he picked the light up and pointed it at them. The makeup artist, you know, tossed and, uh, and ran out of the way. And, uh, yeah, that's how we got the shot. That's awesome, man. I love, I love hearing that, how you got them, got, uh, got tourists involved. <laughs> right. Yeah. He was just standing there and uh it was kind of making the the bride uncomfortable or whatever because like her dress had a really high slit on it or whatever and i'm like look dude if you're gonna stand here can you just you know pick this light up for me so he, he picked it up because you know the nano stands aren't that tall to begin with and uh you know the groom he's he's like super tall he's like six four or something like that but i needed yeah. to get that light up higher you know those nano stands i think they only go to like six and a half seven feet or something like that or six and six feet yeah so I, I love the portability of them and I, I have one that I'll carry with me and sometimes I'll even throw it in my mag case, uh, the, the small case that we have. Um, I'll use mm -hmm. it, like you said, to kind of, you know, do things that are smaller, but you're right. Once you want to go up high, like eight, nine feet, it's just, it's impossible to get them up. Right. Good stuff. Hey, Keith is saying that you have some great places to shoot. What, how, I, I know, I mean, obviously these aren't all in Georgia. We've done a couple different locations how do you normally scout like how do you find these places like in puerto rico or vegas or uh, google you know yeah. find places and stuff that i want to shoot um and then typically the couple and i will go out i'll use that first day to scout whatever locations that i was looking at um to be sure it's accessible because there have been times where i pick stuff and uh mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't quite accessible we had to make a trek to get there but um, I'll spend that first day just scouting the locations, typically shoot the next day, and then leave the following day after that. I love that. I, you know, one of my favorite places uh, to do some scouting, if I know I'm going to go to somewhere that I haven't ever been before, is uh, I'll pull up Google Earth and I'll, I'll fly around on Google Earth a little bit. And I love, it's, it's 
I was gonna see if I can show you guys just kind of a quick 10 second thing on Google Earth, but it's running really slow right now because I, I think I have so much going on on my computer. Um, but I love being able to basically just kind of fly around and actually see, uh, kind of rotate. Yeah, I see it's running really slow. But that's that's one thing I would recommend you guys check out as well is is um, yeah I mean Google and finding places and then and then actually just pull it up on Google Earth and fly around the place and just see what it looks like uh, it's pretty amazing what you can the information that we have at our fingertips right it's crazy right <laughs> hey Denise uh, she was saying where was the shot taken I think the shot you're referring to is the one in Puerto Rico right yeah is that where it was Puerto Rico yeah yep. nice and then uh, uh, Widgie. He's, he's excited. He says, OMG. Let's see. Oh, I can't pull it up for some reason. There we go. There it goes. Um, then you got Elizabeth. Elizabeth Lloyd saying, well done. Okay, princess. Thanks. Awesome. Let's go, uh, Andre, what about this uh, next shot here? Um, this next one, you actually have a, uh, a BTS as well. So tell us about this one. Yeah, so this was like pre-wedding shoot. Um, the couple wanted to do, you know, portraits before the actual wedding. So we shot this in January. Their wedding was like about two or three weeks ago. And, um, you know, the, the building to the right of them in the back, that's actually their wedding venue, the Four Seasons. So um, they wanted to do something with this car. And uh, their parking garage is like, you know, it's right across the street. So I was like, cool, we can shoot this shot. And, that's cool. um you know, put the venue and stuff in, in the back. But, uh, you know, we shot a, a lot of variations of, of things this particular day. So we shot here. We went to some other locations. But, um, you know, this one was was quite the, the one to, to put together, as you'll see in the BTS. Yeah, actually, let's show that right now. So we got uh, here's here's one of the first BTS. So this kind of shows the lighting setup, right? Yeah, so that's that's the lighting setup, two eighty two hundreds, and then um, one obviously in the mag box. The other one, same setup as always, um, mag sphere with the grid on the groom, and then um, so the shot that you actually see, this is the actual shot of them being illuminated. So and here's then, here's the final shot. So here's the illumination. Right. So that's them being illuminated by the. Uh, the uh the lights that are in the shot but as you can see bonnie who was assisting me that day she was across the veil so i needed to get a shot of the veil so it's actually it's multiple images stitched together it's three images as a matter of fact stitched together so you use the veil so, from this shot is that right use the veil uh-huh and then the lighting from this one to create this correct right that's amazing, dude. Now, did you also do any other plate type shot or were you able to grab enough from these ones to recreate kind of that that wall there on the right hand side? So the um, the uh, so the one that I actually showed showed you with the um, with the lights in it, I specifically took that as like a BTS. I, I always try to remember to do that stuff, but I'm just never in that frame of mind. But I did do it that particular day. Um, so there's the shot, obviously, with them being illuminated. I shot another one. I, I shot the one where Bonnie was running out and then there was the veil. And then I shot another one where Bonnie was completely out. So that's how mm -hmm. I got all the information on the right hand side. But yeah. the light that was illuminating the groom, that had to be photoshopped out. And again, I thought it was good placement where I would easily be able to take it out. But bad call. Took me forever to get that light stand out of this shot. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, oh, you know, it, it's it's funny. Sometimes it's that it's that pre planning. It's that kind of like, okay, how do I? What am I? What do I need from this shot right here that I can get now? Right. That's going to save me hours later on. So, but dude, it was worth it, right. man. That that is a, a killer final shot. Um, so however long you took to to create that, it's killer. And I love the fact that the their venue is right behind them i think that just makes it all the better so right yeah put their venue behind and uh you know they wanted to use the car so i was like cool let's this is what we're gonna do yeah yeah you know elizabeth brings up a good point she says bts is the hardest on a wedding day and that's so true it's like when you're shooting engagement photos 
you know, it's easy to kind of step back and say, Hey, I want to grab some BTS, but I feel like on a wedding day, your mind is so like, so many things are going through it. Like just to take a second and say, I got to grab some BTS. It's, it's yeah. It's not, yeah not even easy. on engagement sessions, like that's just not something that I think to normally do. Cause I'm, you know, I hardly ever post on, you know, social and things like this. I don't even think to grab like BTS shots and I keep saying that I want to do more of it or have my assistant do something. And then I always forget. Yeah. And then, yeah. um, never do it i'm the same way man i'm the same way well and i love that shot because you can actually see how you created that there um let's go ahead and oh and by the way derek was also saying he loves the fact that you can see that sky um oh it's fake, it's fake bro it's fake look at the, the <laughs> BTS. what yeah. hey do you do you have any, uh, any tips for that because i know photoshop has a new uh a sky replacement you know in their latest photoshop do you do you use photoshop do you use luminar is there a software you use I use both just all depending on, you know, what's going on. Going Sometimes Luminar just won't get it, um, just won't get it right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I use both and then I go out and I actually, uh, I capture my own skies and stuff. So I, um, nice. you know, when I'm, I'm traveling, I'm capturing skies. So even when I was just in Cancun a couple of months ago, um, well, last month I went to Cancun and Miami and I just spent time capturing my own skies. Dude, that's where the skies are insane. Like in, in, in those areas, those places are humid and like Cancun right. or South America, those places. Like when you go down there and the clouds are just huge clouds. And I should say, I mean, you guys probably have some beautiful clouds out in Atlanta as well. But here in Phoenix, no, you don't. I would think with the humidity, yeah. you probably would. But no. Nah, we like, you know, when I go down to Florida and shoot, I'm like, it's, it's like cheating when you go down there and shoot because <laughs> there's clouds everywhere, man. And uh, every blue moon will get like some nice clouds out here in Atlanta, but yeah. there's no place to be able to get that, that elevation, at least, yeah. you know, where I am to get that elevation to get nothing but clouds and, um, and none of the city, man. So it's, it's a pain. Yeah, no, I, I Arizona, we have just clear skies all the time, dude. It's just like, right. when we get clouds. Everyone's like, yeah, there's clouds in the sky. Let's go get some photos. <laughs> we get excited about it. So Lorenzo saying hi from Ireland. I wonder if Ireland has some good clouds. Hopefully so. Hey, right. um, <laughs> let's go back over to your images. We got a few more here that I want to make sure we cover because there's so many great ones. Uh, tell us about this one as well, Andre. Um, this one was really simple. Um, again, like I, I really like to travel light. So this was actually just an AD 200 with a Max Beer camera left nice. and uh, lit the couple up exposed you know for that uh the sky and that highlight that's inside of the uh the archway that you see there yeah um exposing for that trying not to blow that out too much um but yeah and again you know just trying to 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 create a situation where i can get a nice sky in there andre this looks like a place that would have a lot of tourists or or people walking by did you have to fend worry about that or was it pretty quiet no, like in this particular shot, there may have been somebody standing back there, but uh -huh. it's not it's not really uh, heavily trafficked like that. I guess when the weather is nicer, there are more people who shoot out there, but okay. it wouldn't be just a bunch of random traffic. Like I've, I've shot this a million times. I've shot this particular shot a million times. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, you don't really have to, to fight with it too much, to be honest gotcha. with you. I also love how you got down nice and low and really put them. I'm almost, it kind of got this heroic, you know, feel to it. Look at this. Right. Amazing. Good stuff, man. Laying down uh, on the ground as always, man. Yeah. That's the way you do it, huh? I love right. it. What about this one? Now, this one, your sky looks intense. It looks amazing. Um, was that was that how the sky actually looked for the shot? Or did you do some uh, manipulation there with some gels and stuff? What'd you do? No, that's that's the way the sky looked. It was like that time that's of incredible. day where it wasn't dark enough so that, you know, I could expose for the uh, the lights coming in from the building, the buildings uh -huh. or whatever. And, um, you know, we probably had like another 30 or 40 minutes before something like that happened. Yeah. And, um, so I just exposed enough so that the city would be in silhouette, but it didn't go full silhouette. And I liked the way that it looked. And then I just lit them up with the mag box and that was it. So, okay. So on this one, then basically this was about 
20 minutes before sunset. Is that is that what I'm hearing? It's actually longer, um, a little bit before longer that. than that. Yeah, you know. Okay. But um, the skies that day were just not not complete gray, but, it, you know, obviously it wasn't a lot of clouds. and um, yeah. But it was starting to get to that, like, sunsetty time. And, um, you know. Yeah, that golden it, it hour, to, right? Yeah, it had that color back there, but, you know, it wasn't dark enough to where I could get the lights to come out of the buildings. And then, yeah. you know, so I, I wanted to make it go silhouette. But since it didn't just go into complete blackness, I liked the way that this looked. And, yeah. uh, you know, just just all that little bit of detail in the shadows and just lit the couple up. And, you know, Love my it. sister's there that day. Yeah. You know, this this goes to show that, you know, even if you let's say they plan a wedding and they they plan on get, doing like a grand entrance, you know, before sunset and you're freaking out and you're like, oh, I can't do a sunset photo. You can. It's just going to look a little bit different. It's going to have kind of that more warmth, that gold tones. Um, and what did you do? You just brought your exposure down using your aperture. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Pulling down the aperture. And then um it's crazy because I I would use uh, excuse me my shutter I pulled the exposure down with the shutter okay. and then it's funny because I always go shutter first and then aperture second okay um, for whatever reasons right just being lazy but um, <laughs> you know I I won't lie like, <laughs> it's all about being quick for me you know absolutely so I would pull down the aperture I mean the shutter first and then I went to the aperture to go the rest of the way. And um, just kind of balance it out from there and, you know, just, just nice. get the shot. All right. So, Andre, I got two questions then. One is, um, uh, first off, so it, it, high-speed sync then? You use high-speed sync a lot? I don't use high-speed sync a lot, which is okay. the, the, the crazy thing. Um, I don't – obviously, the ones where the uh, we were on that rooftop, that was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. So I had to use high speed sync in that particular situation. This one was like I know, um, I know, I probably I think I probably had you at this one. I want to say I was at like like four hundred. Okay, and then I went so just a little the rest of the aperture. Yeah, gotcha. So then my other question, and I and I apologize for all these questions, but I just I love their 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 the way they're interacting with each other right there. Is there something, uh, a prompt or something you like to say for couples when you want them to kind of interact and kind of give you that, uh, you know, cute little look like they're doing here? Nah, these two are just really silly. Like I, I see people all the time with the photos and the couples, they're like, they burst uh -huh. into this lap. I'm like, how do they end up, you know, getting that emotion out of people? Um, because typically people are coming to me, they're looking for like the photos they want to, they want the slave photos. Right. Um, uh -huh. But uh, them, they're just fun and goofy, man. We had a, a really cool. good time. With them. They laughed the whole session and yeah. uh, that was just, that was all them. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite prompt that you like to use? No, not at all. Because again, like I feel like when it comes to that type of stuff, I'm terrible at that stuff. I like the more, <laughs> You know, the stoic stuff, you know, go, go stoic and, you know, just be yeah. very stylish and cool. That's my go to. So when I can get little moments like that, I do appreciate them because, you know, again, I see a lot of, you know, friends and colleagues who have stuff. And I'm like, how the hell did they get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's funny, though, Andre, I'm looking back through the images and I, I see what you're saying, though. You, you do kind of like that. You, you have that uh, magazine look. You know, right. not just in your editing, but it's kind of this, you know, I'm going to make you look like you belong right. on a cover of a magazine. And and it's that. Uh, yeah, I, I almost feel like there's not even another word. Um, but yeah, stoic, but kind of more serious, you know, posed type look. I love it. I love it, man. Good stuff. Hey, can I can I bother you for just a few more minutes to do three last images? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah I'm good to go. All right, dude, let's do it. Let's, uh, this one actually is different than a lot of the other ones you did there because this one feels like it's more naturally lit, but I can also see, you know, you're, you're pulling a couple out of there with a little bit of light as well. So tell us about this one. Yeah, this is a uh, good old Miami, man. You know, this, you know, with those good clouds that we were talking about earlier on. And, um, you know, we shot this, I think at like 10 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, again, situation where I'm trying to travel light to the camera left, there is um, 
a eighty two hundred on a nano stand with the um with the mag sphere on it, just hitting them with enough light to uh to be able to make the faces pop. And mm. that's like literally that's that's it. That's cool. Where where did you say this was shot? It's in Miami. In Miami, okay, okay. This actually reminds yeah. me of Cancun a little bit. You see a lot of stuff yeah. like this down there. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Love it, man. Very, very yeah. cool. And then what about this one here? This is another one of those GQ, like, I'm ready to go. Let's have this wedding day kind of shot. <laughs> right, right. So um we were at a we were at the uh the photo cookout and um nice um Chattanooga last October. Um and uh I had just finished teaching my class and the, the guy in the shot, he's actually a, a videographer friend of mine and uh, he was the model for my class. So afterward, I've been there all week looking for stuff to be able to shoot some cool images. And um, I'd seen a few shots and this was one of them that I wanted to do. So standing right next to him is um, a photographer friend of mine, 8200 in hand with the mag sphere and the mag grid on it just enough mm -hmm. to pop his face and um you know framing him out with the with that frame on the opposite side of the building inside yeah. of that one frame just lighting him up lighting him up so i shot it with uh with the my friend holding the actual light then i shot it again to get my plate to be able to photoshop him out Okay, so so your friend was actually in the shot then. He wasn't hiding behind that column. He was nice and close with the mag sphere, mag grid. You said, mm -hmm. mag sphere, mag grid. So he's he's nice. leaning against the uh, the wall there on the opposite side. Okay, okay. Yeah, just standing there with the light on his face, and uh, we shot a couple of shots. And nice. uh, yeah. that's cool, man. Love it, love it, love it. And then lastly. Tell us about this one. This is actually, this looks like the same car. Is that the same Rolls Royce there? Nah, this is in a completely different state, completely different time. So really, wow. Yeah. You, you just have couples that know, uh, have good taste in cars, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or a lot of money and I should be charging them more money. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is, um, this is on, on wedding day. So we had just done the ceremony, went, went outside and you know, they wanted to get a picture of the car. So, you know, we moved the car in place and um, there's a, um, there's the 8200 inside of a, inside of the mag box right there, camera right on them. And uh, two shots, one with the light in the shot and then the other one is a plate. Okay. And then, you know, obviously just Photoshop the, uh, the light stand out. And obviously there's, Photoshop work done to this. So the lights on the actual side of the building, those three lights, yeah, um, those are fake. The lights and the sign um, for Revel, those are fake. And then um, Photoshop for the sky. Wait, wait. So when you say when you say they're they're fake, what? So so you mean you just you you did a little bit more editing on the on the where it says Revel um, and the three lights yeah, above. Like yeah, where it says Rebel, like there's no there are no lights behind there. That's Photoshop to be able to make the letters pop out. Like it's really it's just yeah, it's wow. just um it's just carved out or whatever. But I wanted it to yeah. be able to pop. So yeah, just photoshopped it in order to be able to to get the words of the venue to to poke out. Dude. And the, the three lights on the side, like those were just made in Photoshop. Bro, you need you need to be teaching. All right, and when you in your Cancun, your Embrace workshop, are you going to be going into your editing style as well a little bit? No, actually, we we won't really have that much time because we're doing a lot of um, we're doing a lot of on location stuff. Some of that stuff uh -huh. requires a lot of travel, so sometimes yeah. it's, um, there's a couple locations where it's like two hours to the location and two hours back. So gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah, we won't be doing a ton of the uh, the editing stuff. We do have like a, uh, you do have a, a lecture time. Uh, a lot of that is going to be going over marketing. So specifically Facebook ads, because yeah. um, I'm pretty good with Facebook ads. I have clients that I do Facebook ads for. And, cool. um, you know, people are always asking about how to, 
increase their uh, their bookings and getting out there to more people. Yeah. So Facebook ads. I, see, I, I agree with Derek here. He's saying time for a Photoshop how to. <laughs> <He's> seriously, <laughs> seriously, man. I, when the fact that you're telling me that this photo is, let me actually, I'm going to pull you out here for just a second so we can all take this in one more time. You're saying the revel lighting on the left is is you, you it was just a cutout, kind of like an embossed whatever you actually did the lighting there and then you put the three lights uh -huh. above the r that have the kind of the glow and stuff like that's legit yeah. man that is that is crazy that's awesome like, it makes the yeah. image go from like amazing image to like even incredible even more incredible like the magic you pulled uh -huh. on this yeah the lights the lights on the car those uh -huh. are fake too the oh really the headlights yeah headlights are fake <laughs> yeah, <Okay. they're> all <laughs> but you know crazy. like I only do those edits to the images that couples are getting um are getting uh you know large you know artwork of those uh -huh. particular images um and back in the day like i used to just post i would post the regular image online and then if the couple decided that they wanted to do something i would do these like fancier signature edits after the fact but never post them right because mm. why post the same image twice I'm not doing all of that work just to post it on Instagram. So what I started doing later on, as I saw how much of an effect it had on, you know, people liking the work and booking, you know, things like that, I would yeah. just wait until, you know, after, you know, a couple decided to do something like that. And then I would post that because that's something that's, I was work. I worked on one image yesterday for like three or four hours. Yeah, I'm not doing that just post on Instagram. That's, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brad has a question about your favorite focal length. Do you have one uh, go-to lens that you like to go with? Yeah, man. I'm, uh, well, my go-to lens is always going to be the 70 to 200. If I can't shoot it with the 70 to 200, um, you know, obviously I'll go to uh, some of those super wide shots that you saw, you know, 16 yeah. and 35, because you can only make it happen with the 16 and 35. But um, I love compression, so 70 to 200 will always be my first, and I'll get back as far as I can to be able to compress. Because you know, yeah. when, you're, when you're super wide, you know you kind of get that bowing, right? And then you have that, uh, you don't have that uh, compression of the background. So that 70 to 200, you can like kind of carve it in, still get those wide shots, pull the background in closer. Like that's always going to be. Yeah my go-to 70 to 200 it's kind of like a running joke with you know some of my photographer friends at this point it's like what lens is that like did you even have to ask it's 30. <laughs> but uh obviously there are some shots that you know we obviously didn't use 70 to 200 but that's cool man well hey andre i think jesse sums it up here he says andre is the man always crushing it you certainly are my friend <laughs> The, these images James were incredible, James. and uh, and I I just want to before we jump off of here, I want to bring up one more time. Um, first off, guys, if you haven't yet done it, definitely run over and uh, give Andre a follow, Andre Brown Photo on Instagram, and then uh, be sure to check out uh, if you go right there. There's a link to his website, AndreBrown.com. Go check out his website, and if you look under the Four Photographers tab right here, uh, workshops, and you got the Embrace Workshop coming up. I think. In the beginning, you said you had uh, one one spot left. Is that right? Yeah, one slot left. The site's just two, but I just hadn't updated it. Um, but uh, yeah, there is one spot left, and cool. um, you know, we're definitely looking forward to uh, to having you all come out. You know, the attendees. We've already been like kind of chopping it up and just talking about the stuff yeah. that's going on. And everybody's really excited, which I can appreciate because again. I don't want to just stick people in, you know, a situation and say, Hey, do this. I need people to be able to get value. Um, yeah. I did my first, you know, workshop when I first started photography, something my dad signed me up for. It was like one couple and 50 people and everybody's shooting and <laughs> in front of you couple. while you're shooting and that kind of thing. And yeah. everybody's here to learn and be able to add stuff to their portfolio. So again, you know, we have like a three to one ratio of models to photographers and we want to be able to keep it. Like that. So that's going to be amazing. 
I can't wait to, if I can't make it, I at least want to hear and, and, and hear about it and see the photos. I, I'm sure it's going to be incredible. So uh, whoever's yeah. able to grab that last seat, it's definitely uh, in for a good one. Uh, Andre, this has been a lot of fun, man. I, I certainly have kept you way over time that I, I told you. I was thinking, you know, we try to get it to 40 minutes or so, and I've, I'm almost That's 30 cool, minutes over, so. so I appreciate you spending this time with me. And, and uh, um, you guys, again, go, go give Andre a follow on Andre Brown Photo. Go check out his website. If you have that time available, you would be uh, in, in your best uh, interest to go check out that June 27th through July 1st and be there in Cancun with Andre and the rest of the crew. So that sounds amazing. My friend, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking yeah, this time. Man. This is definitely bucket list, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, dude, it's my bucket list. What are you talking about? And hey, actually, I got one last question for you. You, you, I know you speak at different, you know, things like you said, the cookout and you speak at uh, Shutterfest and different things. Do you have any, you know, are you going to be speaking at any of these conferences this year and next year that you know of? Yeah, I have a lot coming up for this year. So um, I'll be at Shutterfest. I'll be at Shutterfest Glitch, um, which is actually supposed to be next week, but we uh, we uh, it got moved to July. I'll gotcha. be at uh, I'll be at Reset. Um, wow. There's a couple of other ones I can't announce yet. So gotcha. Uh, That's but cool, yeah, man. I have a, six or seven of them that I'll be at this year. Besides, um, you know, my workshop in Cancun. Nice. Well, that's really cool. I, you're a talented person. You're definitely a great instructor. So, you know, again, um, I, I think it, any conference or, or that brings you on as a speaker is definitely a benefit for them. So appreciate, appreciate it. it, Andre. Man. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for taking this time. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, thanks for joining us here for another How I Shot It. Uh, if you're catching this late uh, or you're not catching it live, we do definitely take these and we put them up on YouTube as well. So you guys can watch them anytime. Go back and, and check out some of those images and try to remember how Andre shot it uh, so it can inspire you for your next shoot as well. So thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, I'm going to be off the rest of the week. We got some filming that we're going to be doing, but uh, we're going to be back next week, Monday with Randall Minna. And then we have a show on Wednesday and Friday as well. We have uh, three shows next week. So be sure to join us. All right. Thanks again, Andre. Appreciate it, man. All right. You thanks, have a good man. rest have of your day. Good. All right. All, all right. right. Take bye care. Bye.